Here's a brief overview. Ensure that the basic ABCs of airway breathing and circulation are intact prior to any splinting activity. Expose any injured areas. Observe skin color and symmetry. Assess and document pulse, motor, and sensory function. Lay the splint mattress out on a flat surface near the patient. The Head and Shoulders logo indicates the head end of the mattress. Remove the red vinyl leashed cap from the valve. Release any vacuum in the mattress by pushing in the red valve stem. Keep the valve stem pushed in until the mattress is pliable. Disconnect the patient restraint strap from the mattress. Or if desired, disconnect the strap only from the side of the mattress nearest the patient. Manually smooth out the beads to form a level surface. Connect the pump to the mattress by fastening the pump hose connector to the maxi valve on the mattress. The pump can be attached either at the foot end or the head end. Note, the pediatric evacuosplint mattress only has one valve at the foot end of the mattress. Evacuate enough air to make the mattress semi-rigid. The objective is to be able to move the mattress as a unit during positioning and have the beads stabilized enough to place the patient onto the mattress without pushing the beads to one side. With the correct amount of evacuation, the mattress surface should be smooth but not excessively dimpled. Place the mattress next to the patient with the first buckle in line with the patient's axilla, their armpit. The first buckle is positioned just below the Head and Shoulders logo on the mattress. After checking the patient's back, log roll the patient back onto the mattress. Center the patient if necessary. You may find it easier to log roll the patient under the mattress with the patient's head three to four feet down from the head end of the mattress. You can then move the patient along the long axis of their body into a position that is centered on the mattress. Open the maxi valve at the foot end, allowing air to enter. Keep the maxi valve open until the mattress softens and begins to conform to the shape of the patient. It may be necessary to move beads either away from or under the head of the patient, depending on the anatomy of the patient. Make sure there are sufficient beads to maintain neutral alignment of the patient. If necessary, pad appropriately to ensure neutral alignment. Always follow the protocols established by your local medical director. Here's a note. An alternate method is to use a scoop type stretcher or a breakaway stretcher as a transfer means onto the vacuum mattress. The use of the scoop or breakaway should be determined by your medical director. If a scoop type stretcher is used, there is no need to evacuate the mattress prior to placing the patient on the vacuum mattress. Simply place the patient who is secured in the scoop stretcher onto the vacuum mattress and then remove the scoop stretcher from around the patient. Proceed with the normal application procedures as follows. Attach the patient restraint strap. Keep in mind that one of the primary functions of the strap is to bring the size of the mattress up around the patient's body. Here is method number one we recommend. Start at the chest with the first buckle and work towards the feet. In a zigzag pattern, attach the black buckles and the white buckles in an alternating fashion. Finish by attaching the black buckle at the foot end. Here's an alternative method. Attach all the black buckles on one side of the patient. Then follow by attaching all the white buckles on the other side. Starting at the head end of the mattress, remove slack by lifting at the center of each section of strap that spans the distance between the two buckles. Excess strap is pulled through the black buckle at the foot end of the mattress. Caution! Vigorous pulling on the strap may cause the patient and or the mattress to rotate. This can be avoided by always feeding the strap through the buckles while you tighten the strap. Note, you may find it helpful to store your vacuum mattress with all the buckles attached. 
and then unfasten only the buckles on the side of the mattress that will be slid under the patient. This should make it easier and faster to apply the mattress. If the buckles at the foot end are very close together, it may be easier to remove any excess slack by tightening the strap in the reverse direction, moving from the foot end toward the head end of the patient. Push any beads away from the area above the patient's head, but do not alter the support under the patient's head, which is maintaining neutral alignment. Shape the mattress around the head, making sure to fill the voids by the shoulders and the base of the neck of the patient. Transfer stabilization to the outside of the mattress and continue to hold these head blocks that you have formed until the mattress is evacuated. Evacuate the air from the mattress using the valve located at the foot end. The head end valve can be used, or both valves can be used simultaneously, but it is preferred and recommended to use the foot end valve. Evacuate the vacuum mattress until the desired firmness is achieved. When using the vacuum splint mattress at high altitudes, more pump strokes may be required to achieve the desired firmness of the mattress. To prevent accidental valve opening, whenever a patient is being moved in the mattress or when the mattress is being put away, make sure to always place the red leashed cap over the end of the maxi valve. Finish securing the patient's head using medical grade adhesive tape. Snug up the patient restraint strap and check the patient's neurovascular status before moving. Please always use caution when tightening the patient restraint strap to avoid respiratory compromise or application of pressure to any injured area. Do not lift the mattress from the ends. Use the point of balance lifting handles only. A minimum of two persons positioned at the sides are required. Patient size and weight will determine the number of personnel required to properly lift and move your patient for transport. The large handles on each side allow for two rescuers to grasp the mattress on each side. This provides four support points on both sides of the mattress for large or very tall patients. For extremely heavy patients, additional supportive devices may be needed in addition to the vacuum mattress. When faced with a situation that requires lifting end to end, that is going up or down stairs, use a long spine board or a scoop type stretcher or flat stretcher underneath the vacuum mattress. Vertical rescue requires the use of a basket stretcher or similar device. When using any accessory stretcher, always make sure the vacuum mattress is secured to the stretcher prior to moving the patient. A sturdy draw sheet can be used to make patient removal at the hospital easier. Always check the rigidity of the mattress before lifting the patient off the ambulance cot or other patient handling devices. The vacuum splint mattress is x-ray lucent and MRI compatible.